Sports. Tonight we present for you an Upstate 8 High School football contest from Memorial Field. Tonight's action will pit the Larkin Royals against the East Aurora Tomcats. I'm John Merck here along with Paul Lepic. Thank you very much for joining us. And Paul, we should have a good ball game on hand here at a very packed homecoming game for the Larkin Royals. Yeah, and we stress that word packed. On this side, there doesn't seem to be a seat open. On the far side from East Aurora, a very, very little crowd. I think that's reflective of the record. East Aurora comes in with a record of one, one win and three losses. That win coming last week against Stagg High School. But other than that, they had a real tough road uh, coming to this particular ball game. They opened up against St. Charles. They got blown out 28-3. Opened up against Wabonsi Valley, 38 to eight was the blowout there, and then Streamwood beat them, 30 to eight. So East Aurora's had a tough time. It could be a good game, I agree with you, John, for the Larkin Royals. Larkin Royals having uh, the sophomore quarterback, Damon McDaniel. It could be a good game for Damon in the sense that he can have a lot of more, uh, a lot more comfort in the mm -hmm. pocket, a mm -hmm. lot more you know, time to throw because the defensive line of uh, East Aurora are real suspect right now. So it could be a big game for, for Larkin, uh, kind of a boost in the schedule, and uh, win their homecoming game. Let's hope that happens. And it's a very festive crowd, as we've already said. Many students here in the student section, lots of signs, lots of pom-poms, some confetti, that type of thing that you usually see on homecoming. Of course, the homecoming dance will be taking place tomorrow following this ball game. And we're just about set to get underway here. When you looked at this game at the beginning of the year, you thought Larkin would have probably had a walkthrough. Mm -hmm. West Aurora had, I'm sorry, East Aurora hadn't won a ball game in a long time, but now they're coming off a W against Stag, and right. it could be an interesting ball game. Well, East Aurora has only had three wins in any given season for the past 10 years. They have not had a winning program. In with a brand new coach, Wendell Jeffries, uh, was the assistant coach last year at East Aurora. So. It'll be an interesting game for East Aurora. It was interesting that they won the coin toss. They deferred to kick off to Larkin. They want to bring their defense out on the field, maybe get some momentum to start here. So we'll see what the strategy and if that pans out. And the ball game's underway. Kick on the near side of the field, and it's picked up by Johnson. Breaks a tackle, and he's brought down about the 17-yard line, and there's a penalty on the play, the first play of the ball game. Could be piling on. Let's see what the call is. Was a late flag. At any rate, the Larkin offense will trot onto the field unless they end up re-kicking this. We'll try to get the call for you here shortly. And as usually happens, a clip and a face mask against East Aurora. They'll march that off instead of re-kicking the ball, and Larkin will begin at about the 31-yard line. This opening drive of the ball game. A big penalty against the Tomcats. That's uh, almost a 15, well, it is a 15-yarder. It gets up to about the 31-yard line where Larkin has pretty good field position. They and to the line. And McDaniel starts in the backfield with Peral as a fullback and White is the tailback from the 31 yard line. And White gets the call and he's dragged down about the line of scrimmage. No gain on that first play. Good pursuit on that right hand side for East Aurora. Taking a look at some of the numbers out there for East Aurora, number 85, Buddy Hicks. And they make the stop on that right side among others. That'll bring up second down and 10 and the play being shuttled in. James Johnson, a wide receiver, brings in the play. McDaniel, only a sophomore. They're hoping he's a guy they can build around and run with the next two or three years on this Larkin squad. From the 31. Some obvious miscommunication. Pooh White did not move on that play, a busted play. And they're gonna get more than they got on the first play, which they ended up running. I looks about a yard and a half. Thus far, totally on the running plays now to Pooh White. It'll be a third down, close to nine yards to go. East Aurora, if they're going to be in this ball game, their defensive line has to come through. They've been very suspect throughout the season. And Wabonzi Valley, Streamwood, and St. Charles had no problem with them. And a third down to nine. We'll see if McDaniel goes to the air or if they work the ground one more time. 
And White gets the call. He's got a little bit of room. He's now to just past the 40-yard line. Looks from here like it's going to be close, but he may be a little bit short. Let's see where they spotted. They didn't get it that favorable a spot. And they're going to bring the sticks in and measure this one. Close enough to measure. It's within about a yard. Just past the 40-yard line. Larkin trying to crack midfield. Looks like he's about a uh, foot and a half short from the booth up here. Yeah, I'd say about a foot and a half. Zero in here. And there you see it. Good eye, Johnny, good eye. <laughs> <laughs> Less than two feet. Yeah. And an early decision for the Larkin Royals. You gotta believe they're gonna go for it close to midfield and McDaniel does stay on the field. Well, that East Aurora defensive line hasn't deserved that much respect in the early going here and certainly throughout the season. So, And there yeah. you saw it, Paul, exactly what you were saying. Third and long, and Larkin runs the ball. Yeah. Just an off-tackle run to the right side. And there was nobody there. He got into the secondary extremely quickly. Now Larkin goes with three backs. And it's another handoff. White out near midfield. Mm. He gets the first down easily and much more. Just shy of the 50-yard line. Pooh White thus far the workhorse on this drive for the Larkin Royals. Four carries, 18 yards. First down from the 49-yard line. This drive started at their own 31. Panda Yangi comes out of the game. Larkin keeps three backs in the backfield. And McDaniel hands it to White once again, ah. looking for some room. Nothing doing. He's going to lose yardage on this play. He fought to get back to the line of scrimmage, but it didn't look like he made it. Nice play by Reggie Bliss, number 88 for East Aurora. Just stood his ground, and White ran right into Bliss. Phillips also in on that play. East Aurora starts with three linebackers, Phillips, Keenan, and Jennings. Keenan also the starting fullback on this squad. And it looks like about a half a yard was lost on that play. Larkin comes back to the line of scrimmage. Salinas at the bottom of your screen. And it's play action. He's going to throw the ball, oh. and he overthrows Panda Yangi running a route down the middle of the field. They can't hook up. The pass is incomplete. Well, he had a step on number 20, Omar Magana, the defensive back on that side. And that help from the weak side didn't get over there in time. Could have been an interesting play there. Panda Yangi could have uh, gone in for a TD. But in any case, it sails out of bounds. It'll be a third down situation. Looked like McDaniel rushed it a little bit, too. He had a little play action. Took one step, maybe it was a timing route, I'm not sure, but the ball was overthrown at any rate. Big third down here for the East Aurora defense, trying to stay in this ball game early. Two wide receivers split the top of the screen, and White gets the handoff, he's got some room once again, well into the secondary, brought down by number 42 for East Aurora. Alex Donaldson on the tackle. Good play by White. White got into the secondary, kept his balance, a little off balance there, and was able to get into the secondary and get some big yardage. Once again, it's going to leave fourth, and, fourth down and less than a yard. Pandy Yangi once again brings the play in. You know, in our pregame, we don't want to paint Larkin as being the most terrific team on the on the uh, in the conference here because Larkin I think for them to win have to cut down on their fumbles too there's a timeout on the field um, their line has been suspect as well so you know whichever line can really master the, the line of scrimmage and, and hold their own I think is going to win this ball game but I think Larkin has to cut down on fumbles too and that's one of the things that head coach Bob Krieger was wondering about as the season's been going on and it hasn't been that successful for Larkin coming in with a record of two and two. But uh, it'll be interesting to see if which side wins the line of scrimmage. Right now, definitely, it's on the side of the Royals. And Krieger making sure that uh, he takes this opportunity to get the play off that he wants. Fourth and one, and they're in Tomcat territory.
We'll see what they do here. Good money, safe money, would be betting on a poo white run, probably over right tackle <laughs> or left tackle. <laughs> we'll see what happens as we approach the eight minute mark here in the first quarter in this upstate eight conference battle. He's only had six out of seven plays from the line of scrimmage. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't imagine why you'd be thinking of it. And there it. you had a look at some of the activity in the bleachers. A little toilet paper action. From the 42-yard line, fourth and one. And Pooh White finds some room outside. He's got the first down and more driven out of bounds at about the 33-yard line. That's going to be a first down for the Royals. Gain a nine again. He's getting about nine yards per carry. That he, that he gets any decent yardage on it. Pooh White, definitely the guy they look to, and when they go to the air, they like to go to Blaylark, who's questionable for this ball game. We'll see if he does indeed get any action. Hurt his ankle a couple ball games ago. First down and 10. Larkin on a ball controlled drive, consuming the better half of this first quarter thus far. And it's play action, McDaniel looking for some room. He's throwing downfield, and the pass is thrown out of bounds. That ball intended for number 40, Michael Stolte. Couldn't bring it in. And Stolte had good coverage on this near side, number 23, Deion Sams, with him stride for stride. Stolte didn't have much room on the sideline here, and it went incomplete. Stolte, a starting linebacker on the defensive unit, sees spot duty on the offense, splits time with Treadup and Salinas in the wide receiver slot. That'll bring up a second down and 10. Once again, it's White and Perales, who's yet to carry in the backfield. From the I formation. Ah. Oh, and some big time movement. Number 75, Eddie McKaylon jumped well into that East Aurora secondary. And that's one thing that Larkin's going to have to cut down tonight is, is tr mistakes. Fumbles are mistakes and penalties like that. Totally unwarranted. You have number 75 jumping off sides. You know you're offside when you're on the <laughs> offensive line <laughs> and you jump and nobody else moves and next thing you know you're hitting a safety in the backfield. <laughs> They'll back it up. Second down and 10 as the clock continues to tick. And White around the left side looking for some room. He cuts the corner, picks up good yardage before he's once again driven out of bounds on the far sideline. Alex Donaldson once again in on the tackle. That's a gain of 16 yards for White as he cut around over on that left side. Got good blocking. So first and 10 again for the Larkin Royals as the drive continues. This drive started at their own 31. I stand corrected. Yeah, Larkin's record's one and three on the season. So two teams at one and three right now. Thus far, Larkin winning the battle you talked about a little bit, Paul. The offensive line really dominating the line of scrimmage. A little bit of movement again. We'll see if there's a flag. Meanwhile, White around the far side. Once again, driven out of bounds, but not before he picks up a healthy chunk of yardage. I don't see any flag down, so that surprises me a little bit. It looked like the center really jumped offside. But that just, you know, that just goes to show they are just exploding off the ball. You're in the early going. Indeed they are. And Pooh White carrying most of the load. Picked up eight yards on that carry. That'll bring up a second down and two. As Panda Yangi once again brings in the play to McDaniel and the Larkin Royals. And that East Aurora defense is going to get tired early. They've spent the bulk of this first quarter on the field. Their offense has yet to touch the ball. I guess it wasn't a good strategy to have <laughs> to defer the, the coin toss and, and to kick off first. An inside handoff. Perales gets the carry, still fighting. And it's gonna be close to the first down. They faked that pitch to White that time and handed it to the big fullback for some inside yardage. And he's gonna be a little bit short. Perales struggling, struggling, got it almost two yards. Just short of that down marker. Give him a gain of one. Be a third down and one at the 14. And Brian Melvin checks into the ball game. 
along with Daniel Petschow for the Royals. Petschow lines up in the backfield with White and Perales, and it's White who gets the carry. Ooh. Not much doing on that play, and the ball is loose, but they're going to say that it was down, I believe. Well, he really got met at the line of scrimmage there. He was able to fight his way through. Let's see if that is a first down. It is a first down. Indeed it is. Deion Sams in on the tackle, one of the leading tacklers on this team. Comes into the ball game with 28 tackles on the year. He likes to come up from the secondary and try to stop that run. And the beat goes on for the Larkin Royals. They continue to escort their plays in via the tight end and wide receiver slot. Once again, they'll line up with the three-man backfield as they start from the 12-yard line. Once again, it's White looking for room, and the ball is loose once again, and ah. Larkin may have coughed it up. Uh, they're ruling that it was down. Boy, and I got to wonder about that <laughs> play. Larkin catches a break here. Boy, it looked like he was still in the air, still possibly on his feet, and the ball came loose, but Larkin will will keep possession of the football and get a gain of about two yards on that play. Boy, we don't have the best view in the world, but that ball no. looked like it was definitely loose. Right. Second down and seven that leaves us with. Conventional backfield. That's what McDaniel's looking at. Larkin trying to push it in for the early lead here in this upstate eight conference battle. And it's an outside run by White looking for the end zone. He smelled it but couldn't quite get there. Couldn't quite catch the number on that far side there. It looked like number 23, Deion Sams, finally brought him down. But I think one of the middle linebackers may have twisted him a little bit to, to have some reserves come in and help with the tackle. That's right. It looked like Keenan actually made the first contact, the middle linebacker, and then the secondary swarmed him. That's going to bring up third and one yard from the three-yard line. And Pooh White, will he be equal to the task as we go under five minutes left here in the first quarter? Larkin chewing up a lot of clock. They go with two tight ends on the line, and it's White. And he's Touch in for the touchdown over the left side, Pooh White. Scores the touchdown for the Larkin Royals. They jump on top early, sixth zip, as White plunges in from two yards out here at Memorial Field. The Larkin Royals on homecoming. Jump on top early, six, nothing, and chew up more than seven minutes of the clock on the opening drive. And they started at their own 31-yard line, that culminating with a touchdown by Coulson White. Three-yard run, makes it six, nothing, Larkin. See with the extra point. And Matt Gimpert is on to try to add the extra point. Snap is high. And he misses it wide left. Larkin will have to settle for a six zip lead. And there you see White holding that right hand. He may be he may have been shaken up on the play. Unofficially 74 yards rushing for White in that one. White looks like he's in some pain. He's definitely favoring that right hand. 12 carries, 74 yards in that opening drive. One drive, 74 yards. He <laughs> is definitely the man. This could be a very long night for the East Aurora Tomcats, and I'll tell you, if they keep this ball on the ground all night, we could be out of here in a hurry. This <laughs> game will fly. <laughs> well, really, there's really no reason. I mean, the, the defensive line didn't really stop uh, Pooh White, so why even try to put the ball in the air if, you know, if uh, the East Aurora Tomcats can't stop the run? Play safe. Don't turn it over. And Pooh White's the guy that'll kick it off for the Larkin Royals. Boy, this guy really does everything. And back for East Aurora. They have a couple guys drifting back there to receive the kickoff. Magana and Tobin Ruff. Their primary weapon as Pooh White gets set to kick it off. Larkin on top, six zip, under five minutes left in this first quarter. And it's a squibber on the ground. Pick it up by Magana. 
He's at the 25, looking for some room. And a big time hit at the 28 yard line. No doubt about it. Number 46, it looks like Brian Melvin was in on it. Also number 65, Jonah Besh was out there too. Melvin with a big time pop. East Aurora will begin their first drive of the ball game from their own 30 yard line. They'll need to march 70 yards to tie this thing up. They will start with Blattner at quarterback with Keenan and Ruff in the backfield. We'll see if Larkin's defense is up to the task this evening. And we have a penalty on the play. And there's a penalty on the play. From the 35 yard line. That'll leave a first and five, four minutes left here in the first quarter. And first down and five, under four minutes left. Blattner set to take the snap. And he does, and the give is to Ruff, who does not get much, and a small skirmish on the play. That's gonna leave second down and five. Second down and five for the Tomcats. It's called second down and two, I beg your pardon. Blattner set to take the snap. From the 37 yard line. And somebody penetrated for a quick hit. But Keenan able to get out close to the 40 yard line. And we apologize for the audio difficulties that we had a minute ago. Hopefully we're back intact for you, but you hopefully had a picture. Two fifty left in this ball game. Third and one for the Tomcats. Just keep calling it like we would, because it keeps popping on and off. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean the best you can. Oh, under pressure, he gets the ball off to Keenan, who has the first down, third and short, and the Tomcats throw deep. Right near midfield, he gets that ball off under some pretty intense pressure. First down and 10 at the 49 yard line. And Blattner going to the air early. And he comes to the line with Keenan and Deion Sams in the backfield. Uh, looks like that's gonna go against East Aurora. And movement against East Aurora. And they'll back it up a little ways and East Aurora will resume from there. As we go under two minutes left here in the first quarter of play. And it's Sams and Keenan in the backfield. From the 44 yard line, first and 15 is what we'll call it. And he's looking to throw a quick time ah. pattern and East Aurora unable to connect. Buddy Hicks on a little slant route. And that one was a little high. Hicks was able to get one hand on it, couldn't bring it in. Good coverage by the Larkin Royals there in the secondary. Blattner now gets a new unit of troops here. Once again, we do apologize for the audio difficulties. We're trying to work all that out. We will keep a picture for you, even if the audio goes out, so please stay with us. Audio Second down and 15 for the Tomcats. 
their first drive of the ball game. Once again, it's Sams and Keenan in the backfield for the Tomcats. Wide receivers split each side, Hicks and Martinez. Larkin goes with four linebackers and five linemen. <laughs> and he rolls, gets out, of, and he gets the pass away, but is unable to connect with Reggie Bliss, his tight end. Interesting to see down on the uh, on this near side, number 42 seemed to be wide open. Alex Donaldson by the sideline there, and Latner never saw Donaldson downfield. And they are sneaking into the secondary. But they're left with a third down and 15. Uh, John, I think it's going to be pass. Third and long here for the Tomcats. And it's an inside handoff. And the ball is sitting right on the turf, and I believe Larkin picks up the fumble. Well, he got hit enough times. Number 34, Dustin Keenan, hit about three, four times, and that fourth time, Keenan coughed it up. And it looks like Johnson was in on the recovery, and Larkin will take over. Their own 49-yard line already on top six zip. East Aurora had a little success early in that drive, Paul, but then they got the big penalty. They were forced into a passing situation, and Larkin forced the turnover on a draw play. White and Polaris in the backfield behind McDaniel. And they're going to the air. He's looking downfield. He's got a man. Oh. And Salinas unable to pull that one in, overthrown a tad, but that was a pretty looking pass. Boy, I tell you, McDaniel, a sophomore quarterback, that was a perfect spiral. Absolutely perfect spiral. That was a pretty pass, <laughs> but it goes for the incompletion nonetheless. Second down at 10. But we liked it, Damon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and Pooh White has dominated this first quarter, but Larkin looking pretty good. They've gone to the air three or four times unsuccessfully, but they're trying to mix it up. And it's White looking for room on the right side, and he's hit and brought down after a gain of about five yards. Brought down by number 24, Elroy Phillips, and number 34, Dustin Keenan on this near side. A pair of their linebackers. And Coach Jeffries told me that he knows the defense has a lot of problems they're trying to work through, but the linebacking core really is one of the strengths if he had to pick a strength of that defensive unit. Under 30 seconds left, third down and six for the Royals. Probably get this playoff and then switch ends. We'll see what happens. Big third down for East Aurora. Trying to contain the damage. And it's Pooh White oh. who slips down for no gain on that play. They're going to give the tackle to Reggie Bliss, number 88. And that brings us to the close of the first quarter. The Larkin Royals on homecoming here at Memorial Field in Elgin on top six zip. And we'll be back with second quarter af action after this short break on Jones Intercable Sports. PK Products and the Bears Football Report, a winning combination for the sports enthusiasts. PK provides the set for this local sports program. And for great gift ideas, visit our factory outlet store at 2000 Fox Lane in Elgin. Hours are 9 to 5, Tuesday through Saturday. We are located just off the I-90 tollway or call 708-695-7070. You can also find P&K products at the following locations. J.C. Penney's or Merle Harmon Fanfare. I thought I was going blind, but I didn't have enough money to do anything about it. The National Eye Care Project offers medical eye care to those in need. If you are 65 or older and do not have an ophthalmologist, please call 1-800-222-EYES. Sight is so precious. If you need help, call 1-800-222-EYES. And we're back with second quarter action. The Larkin Royals drifting into punt formation, and there was a penalty on the play against East Aurora again. So now it'll be fourth down in a yard. It could change the uh, strategy here. Indeed it does. Larkin decides that they'll go for it on fourth and one. Once again, three men in that 
Larkin backfield. Petschow joins White and Perales. Pooh White picks up the first down on that play. So a costly penalty for East Aurora. Well, if you had to give a highlight for that first quarter, Cushion White, Pooh White, 14 carries, 75 yards in that first quarter alone. <laughs> a big oh, first quarter. My goodness. And even bigger, Larkin up six zip on the scoreboard. And now they're starting to once again move into the heart of East Aurora territory. And White once again gets the carry, picks up about four yards. White's finding good running room on that right side. Before they, they attack the other side of the East Aurora defensive line, this time they're going around on the other side and White's finding plenty of running room. It'll be second down and about seven yards to go. Ball on the 36 yard line as the fans continue to come into this place. It's homecoming. Under 11 minutes left and White once ah. again. Not much doing there. He's stacked up and driven back on the play. A couple guys in on that tackle. Quentin Bailey came up from his cornerback spot. Reggie Bliss, number 88, also was in on that tackle on that far side. And they'll mark it as a no-gainer, bringing up a third down and eight. And the play being shuttled in by Perales, who checks back into the ballgame. Petchow checks out for the Royals. McDaniel gives a little bit of instruction. And they come back to the line of scrimmage. Third and long. Salinas the bottom of your screen. And McDaniel looking to throw. He's going downfield for Salinas. And there could have been pass interference. And oh there's the my. flag. And a guy from the other side of the field throws the flag. The official right in front of the play didn't throw a flag. And number 23, Arturo Salinas was held on this side. Oh. oh, and they call that one against Larkin. Well, Salinas had his arms in front of him. Very questionable call. Yeah. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. The ruling that he could have interfered with the defensive back. The only problem I have is the defensive back was looking at Salinas instead of looking where the ball was. Absolutely. So. Well, that'll bar back Larkin up, and it'll be a uh, punting situation once again. First penalty against Larkin. That's a costly one. East Aurora will decline the penalty and force Larkin to punt. So they started where they ended at their own 49. This is where they're going to end it around their own 49 yard line with a punt. No. Five left, first down at 10, ball on the 21-yard line. And the Tomcats will begin at the 21-yard line. First down and 10. Single back formation this time. And they set the man in motion as they begin from the 21-yard line. And the pitch is outside to Ruff. Ruff looks for some room and driven out of bounds. Well, they've got about six yards on that one. And a healthy gain on first down for the Tomcats. That'll leave second down and about three and a half yards. 
I'm sorry, he gained three and a half gained yards. Gained three and a half yards, all right. <clears throat> so we go under nine minutes left, Larkin clinging to a six zip lead. That coming courtesy of the first drive of the ball game. And now they go back to two men in the backfield for the Tomcats, Ruff and Keenan. And back to pass as Blattner looks downfield, throws into double coverage, and flags fly in the backfield as the pass goes incomplete downfield. Uh, oh, oh, roughing the passer. Roughing the passer, a big penalty against the Larkin Royals on a ball that was not going to be caught. I'll tell you, Blattner faded back to pass. He kept his eye on Bliss all the way down on that pattern. Bliss double teamed, almost triple team, still insisted on, on going to Bliss, but uh, East Aurora catches a break in the sense of roughing the passer, so it's an automatic first down. Absolutely no chance to make that completion, nope. but they'll march it off, and East Aurora will continue their drive from their own 41-yard line. First and 10 from there. Keenan and Sams in the backfield for the Tomcats. And on a nice fake, East Aurora able to pick up some healthy yardage. Boy, a couple of those Larkin Royals really bit on that, on that fake over on the left side and just ran right by the runner. A little counter play. Picks up about close to seven yards. As we go under eight minutes left here in the ball game, second down and three for the Tomcats. Ball sitting at about the 47 yard line, call it the 48, two men in the backfield. Larkin with a stacked defense and the handoff goes to Keenan this time. Looking for some inside yardage, nothing doing. Excellent pursuit by the Larkin Royals. The defensive line, including number 69, Jeremy Heffling. 5'11", 200-pounder. And the two guys that start in this backfield for the Tomcats really have struggled thus far, but they've played against some of the toughest defenses in the league. Mm. Ruff averaging 1.3 yards a carry, Keenan at 2.2, and maybe that's why Sams is seeing some more back action in the backfield this week. Third down and three is what the Tomcats are left with. They go with an eye back formation. And it's Sams who gets the call. And he finds the first down into the secondary wow. and brought down just short of the 40-yard line. A nice run. Looks like a gain of about 12 yards for Sams. He's starting to rack up some yardage, too. Deion Sams on the carry. In the game against Streamwood last week, Sams only had four carries for nine yards. He's already got unofficially over 20 yards here, close to 21 yards on three carries. Sams came into this ball game averaging six yards a carry, but he's only carried the ball 14 times. First and 10 from the 41 yard line. And it's Keenan on the pitch. And he's hit initially. Hit initially by Tredup, I believe. There is a penalty face mask against mm. the Royals. My goodness, a face mask call now against Larkin. So now we're looking at another big gain. Could carry with an automatic first down. And Larkin not helping themselves during this drive. Well, we gave them two first downs due to penalties. One uh, roughing the passer penalty and the other one here a uh, face mask penalty. I'll spot uh, the ball at about the 24-yard line. Another big one, first down and 10 from the 24. East Aurora marching down the field, not doing a whole lot offensively, but a couple big penalties have picked up about 30 yards in this drive. Tomcats looking to get in the end zone and tie this one up. Keenan and Sams in the split backfield. Back to pass as Blattner looking deep, pump fakes, 
gets the ball away. Once again, looking to Reggie Bliss through into triple coverage. Boy, Bliss was, as you said, triple coverage. That pass going just slightly behind him, almost picked off by Larkin. Almost picked off. And Blattner, with a little bit of early tunnel vision, seems to lock in on that one receiver. Not making very wise choices. That one falling incomplete. I'll tell you, the success story for East Aurora thus far this year has been Tobin Ruff with two touchdowns. They have not had that much offense. They haven't put the ball in the end zone that often. And here on a counter play, not much doing on that play either. Nice play by Heffling, who got a hand on the runner. Omar Magana got the carry. He doesn't carry the ball too often and couldn't produce on that play. Actually lost about a yard. That'll bring up third down and a little more than 10. Ball on the 24-yard line. East Aurora would love to punch it in here and tie this one up as we close in on the five-minute mark left in the first half. Once again, a split backfield. Ruff and Keenan. Two wide receivers split either side. And it's Ruff with the carry, looking for some room. Breaks a tackle. He looks to get outside, oh. and he does. A nice run. Ruff down to about the 10-yard line. I don't think it's enough. It's going to be barely enough for the first down, and they'll move the sticks. And East Aurora marches on a nice run. Boy, he high-stepped it on this near side. Broke two or three tackles. Gain of 14 yards down to about the... Well, they're going to mark it at the 11. It looked like he reached the 10, but first and 10 at the 11... They can get a first down without a touchdown here. Ruff with a nifty bit of running, and he remains in the backfield with Keenan. The Larkin defense. They go with four, five men on that defensive line now. Trying to shut down East Aurora. Blattner rolling left. Oh, and nice he's brought play. down a big hit. And a beautiful piece of defense by Jeremy Treddock. Wow, Treddock came in unblocked, untouched. Just followed Blattner as he was fading over to the left side. Just cut him off at the pass, so to speak, and that was it. Blattner unable to get away from the big rush. A loss of 10 on that play. That'll bring, down, bring up second down and 20 for the Tomcats. That could be a big play here to try to squelch this East Aurora drive. Boy, a designed rollout, and somebody did not pick up Jeremy Treadup coming from his linebacker slot. Once again, a split backfield for East Aurora. Oh, and <laughs> a lot of movement. <laughs> but they let it roll there out in there. They throw the flag. They have to wait until the snap of the football. <laughs> Boy, was that an interesting play, and they'll bring that one back. It was almost the Canadian Football League. <laughs> <laughs> Two guys in motion at the same time. Everybody moved on that play except the referee. I think they have that in arena football, too. <laughs> And now East Aurora, they got this, this far on the drive with Larkin penalties. Now they're hurting their own cause, and they'll back this up a little bit more. Well, this drive started at East Aurora's own 21-yard line, as you said earlier, John, that uh, two penalties have given East Aurora 30 yards due to Larkin mistakes. And that's where they find themselves, deep in Larkin territory, but now it seems East Aurora shooting themselves in the foot a little bit. And then Ke Keenan and Ruff doing a little square dance in the backfield will move the Tomcats back another five yards. Second down and about uh, 25 yards. A little less than 25 yards for the first down. We'll see what the Tomcats do here. Larkin back a little bit on defense. Blattner looking to throw, takes a oh deep my. drop. He's under pressure. Boy, he's drilled on that play, but it looks like he got the completion. The Tobin Ruff, Ruff leaped in the air and was able to come down with that ball. Jeremy Hafling leveling Blattner on that play, and not a whole lot gained. <laughs> all that, all that punishment, we'll call it a gain of about two yards. <laughs> East Aurora looking down at looking at third and 21. They need to get down to about the one yard line to pick up the first down. Standard split backfield, Ruff and Keenan. 
as we go under three minutes left here in the first half of action on Larkin's homecoming. And Blattner. It's a timing pattern to the corner. Nobody anywhere near that, and a flag is thrown on the play. We'll see. Maybe the receiver was held up. I'm not sure. That's, that's an interesting call. 94 nonchalanted it out there. It looked like that was just a broken setup there, but let's we'll see what, what the call is. Penalty. Oh, my. Against Larkin. Third major mistake here. You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> Third major pass interference now. So we've got roughing the passer, got a face mask, and now pass interference all against Larkin. That's three major penalties. He never let him get off the blocks, and the official threw the flag right away, and that is an automatic first down. That penalty really hurts. They only move the ball down to the 11-yard line, but it carries with it an automatic first down. So from third and 21, it's now first and 10. Uh-uh-uh. Bob Krieger not too happy on the sideline. I wouldn't be either. Now they go with the I formation. And it's the handoff to Sam. Sam's looking for some room. He's met and hit by that linebacker core. A swarm him under after he picks up a few. A mark forward progress, a gain of about three yards for Sam's. So we close in on the two minute mark. Yukana, Collado, Michelic. The Larkin defensive line trying to dig in here and stop the Tomcats from tying it up. Boy, if East Aurora scores a touchdown, the footnote on that drive is three tremendous Larkin penalties. Mm -mm -mm. Second down and seven. Tight end down the right for East Aurora. Larkin is set, and he's looking to go to the air. Blattner looking for somebody, and he throws the ball out of the back of the end zone. That pass falls incomplete. Nice coverage in that secondary by the Royals. Well, that pass really sailed. The, the back judge is getting it from the fans <laughs> past, the, <laughs> past the end zone there. Well, third down and seven. Third down and seven, as you said, a big play once again for East Aurora. A golden opportunity to capitalize on some key Larkin mistakes at this juncture of the ball game. Be one heck of a stand if Larkin can, can withstand any points being scored here. A minute 33 left. Ball lies on the seven yard line and it's Sams and Keenan lining up in the eye for the Tomcats. We'll see what happens. Keenan goes in motion to the right side and the pitch is out to Sams, and he's met and hit and driven down. Jeremy Tredup leads the charge, and a big loss on the play. Uh, Sams couldn't get out on this right side, and Tredup was just waiting for him. Make it a fourth down, and out comes the field goal unit. Looks like he lost five on that one. And East Aurora will try to get on the board here with a field goal. And Magana on to try a field goal from about 30 yards out. Snap is down. Uh -uh. And he missed it wide left. Looked like he probably had enough foot to get it there. And in, in the practice, we saw, Paul, that he can't connect from that distance. But he kicked it wide left, and the score remains Larkin 6, East Aurora Zero. 45 seconds left here in this first half of play, and Larkin will take over on the missed field goal. As you can see by that flag there, we have a light breeze coming in off the south, but it's an absolutely gorgeous night for football. Temperature about 70-some-odd degrees. High of about 80 earlier this afternoon, so absolutely gorgeous night for football. Excellent night for homecoming. And a big crowd on hand, as we've told you previously. A lot of royal blue in the stands. Larkin takes over on their 20-yard line, 45 seconds left in this second quarter of football. Perales and White in the backfield. I take that back. Johnson gets the carry. Johnson with a nice run. Johnson takes it out to about the 33-yard line. 
And they call a timeout with, 20, with uh, 38 seconds left. And a gain of 13. And indeed, Larkin will burn a timeout. Krager jots onto the field. He wants to talk this over with his quarterback. How important is it, Paul, that East Aurora dig in here and go down only six zip? Well, yeah, you're dealing with uh, a little bit of a psychological advantage. If that defensive line can hold Larkin here without getting any more points on the board, you go in only, as you said, down six, and you still have a shot in the second half. But then again, I think East Aurora has to admit to themselves that the reason for the good field position in the last drive was because of three Larkin penalties. And Larkin, when they go into there, they have to say to themselves, we don't want to commit any more mistakes, fumbles, penalties, whatever, to possibly give East Aurora a chance to not only get on the board, but possibly win this ball game. Because if East Aurora scores a touchdown, you have that missed extra point earlier. And if East Aurora makes that extra point, you're going to end up losing this ball mm -hmm. game. So you don't want that to happen. So if you're Larkin going in, you're saying, let's cut down the, let, let, let's cut down on the mistakes. If you're East Aurora, Let's try to hold them here and maybe get a good defensive stand going into the third quarter. First down and 10 from the 33-yard line. Johnson remains in the backfield. Two receivers at the top of your screen. Johnson gets the call. Looks to bounce outside. And not much happening on that particular carry. He's lucky if he gained a yard on that one. Ran more east-west than north-south on that one. Johnson, only a junior, he'll be looking to fill the shoes of White full-time next year as White's a senior and will eventually graduate. And Larkin calls another timeout with 28 seconds remaining, and they're left staring at a second down and nine. And as you said, a beautiful night for football. It's that time of the year where all the schools in the area begin to celebrate their homecomings. Mm -hmm. And we head into some pretty big football games in the Upstate 8, this weekend, there's another big football game taking place. So many, there's so many people here. Do you see the homecoming court out in front? As they will be introduced, no doubt, during the halftime festivities. But as you were saying, a lot of big games. St. Charles at Elgin. This game being played on Friday night. The next game, or the next day, Saturday, and that's when St. Charles comes to town to take on the Elgin Maroons, and that's a very big game in the Upstate Eight, as you were saying there. There's a good indicator of the weather. You can see some jackets. The cheerleaders have put on their letter sweaters as it's a nice fall evening here. As you can see, though, there's not a seat to be had in the crowd. As our camera pans back here. A full house, and the Royals look at second down and nine. 28 seconds remain in the first half. McDaniel looking back to pass. He throws downfield, and he overthrows his intended receiver. Trying to hit Salinas. Another nice throw, Paul. This kid's got a good arm. I'll tell you, but he hit Quentin Bailey, number 36, from East Aurora, right in the <laughs> hands, and he dropped it. <laughs> Bailey fact, wishes he had that one back. In fact, Bailey ran into a teammate of his, and both went mm -hmm. down. <laughs> that brings right. up a third and long. But no, I was going to say you're right. That spiral action on that pass going to be something to see in the next two years for the Larkin Royals. And you have Salinas down at the bottom of your screen. Oh, McDaniel, a little bit of fake, and they set up the screen to Johnson. He's got some blockers out front. They throw a nice block. He turns it back towards the inside and has the first down out across the 45-yard line. And the clock once again is stopped as they move the chains. Unofficially, I have him with his first pass completion, he being McDaniel. That one, 12 yards to Johnson. Well, this kid can only get better. He's a sophomore quarterback. He's learning. This is a perfect team to, to learn against, considering what, what we've got here. East Aurora. We go under 10 seconds. This could be the last play of the half. McDaniel, back to pass under tremendous pressure, and he's dropped as time expires by Brian McClaire. That'll bring us to the end of the first half of football from a very jubilant, excited, best of Memorial Field. The Larkin Royals celebrating homecoming and on top, six zip.
Players come off the field. They'll take a little break, and so will we. We'll be back with second half action after this break on Jones Intercable Sports. It doesn't matter if you're a kid or an eagle. When you eat a polluted Great Lakes fish, you get polluted too. Toxic pollution will get better, or it will get worse. You can choose. The kind of world we leave them depends on what we do now, right now. For every child's future, save our Great Lakes. The Sierra Club needs your help to stop the poison now. Elgin continues to grow. The population currently stands at more than 77,000. And experts say that by the year 2000, that number will move to more than 95,000. As the area continues to grow and develop, you need to keep in touch with the latest developments. Here at Channel 6, we don't just cover Elgin, we care about it. Join John Merck here and the Elgin Week in Review news team. Fridays at 6 and 9 p.m., Saturdays at 9.30 a.m. It means if you drive sober, you, you'll survive another, and you'll save other people's lives. Like, people who just came from a party, you know, like, give the keys to somebody else when they're drunk. Because when they're drunk, they can't see that good. They'd be so jolly, and they'd see a lot of things wiggly. Help protect Illinois' future. Drive smart. Drive sober. Not in the mood to howl, are you, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> there you go, and I can assure you the East Aurora Tomcats don't feel a whole lot better. We're getting back ready for second half action. Larkin leading this ball game, six zip at the half, and not a lot of offense that first half, Paul. No, on side of uh, number 12, Quilson White, nicknamed Pooh. Poo-poo. Uh, Poo-poo, yeah. 12 carries, 74 yards on the first possession for Larkin, which resulted in a touchdown at the 443 mark. Uh, the extra point was no good, and Larkin holds that 6 nothing lead. But at the half, unofficially, I have White with 17 carries with 85 yards. We noticed at halftime that White came out for the uh, homecoming festivities uh, down on the field, mm -hmm. and he had an ice pack on that hand. So... We might not see too much of Pooh White in the second half. We'll see what happens, but... Uh, it's a shame because that yeah. first half was a delight to watch him run, especially that opening drive. Sure, and, uh, you know, I think we said uh, during the halftime break that uh, he could very easily have gotten probably, probably close to 200 yards because when White handled the ball, there was absolutely nobody stopping him until he got way into the secondary, so... It'll be interesting to see how the second half results. I, I would imagine Larkin would try to keep the ball on the ground. They've had the most success. Damon McDaniel, the sophomore quarterback, thus far one out of five. That's unofficially. But that pass was to Myron Johnson, number 29. That came out of the backfield. He has absolutely no completions to the traditional mm -hmm. wide receivers. So I, if I was Larkin, I'd keep the ball on the ground, not take any chances, and uh, come out of here with a victory. And Larkin will kick off to begin the second half. Back deep for the Tomcats. Will be Tobin Ruff. He's set to receive the opening kickoff. We're just about set to begin second half action. Here at Memorial Field in a beautiful halftime it was. We wish we could have brought you some of that. The temperature dropping a little bit. And we're underway. Another kind of squib kick popped up into the air and fielded about the 30-yard line up the middle and he knocked down at the 45-yard line is Jason Thurman, a backup running back, guy who fielded the kick for the Tomcats, and that is where they will begin. Pretty good field position. Excellent field position for the uh, East Aurora Tomcats. Let's hope that Larkin doesn't have miscues as they did in the first half on that one drive, which resulted in 45 y uh, yards in penalty yardage for East Aurora. So let's see what happens as they come up to the line of scrimmage. 
And Blattner starts the second half with Ruff and Keenan in the backfield. They slide into an I formation now. And there's a miscue. Keenan, it looks like, fell on the ball, but not a clean exchange between the center, Armando Najera, and Blattner on that first snap. Yeah, looking at East Aurora's possessions in the first half, they started at their own 28-yard line on their first possession of the ballgame. It resulted in a fumble. In their second possession, they started at their own 21-yard line, and they marched down that field in that long drive, but they missed the field goal. So two miscues on their first two possessions, and they almost miscued there, but luckily for Keenan, he was able to fall on the ball. It's their third possession of the ball game. And on the botch play, that'll leave East Aurora with a second down and 12, the ball lying at about the 42-yard line. A minute gone by here at the beginning of the second half of football. And the penalty flags fly once again. The Larkin players pointing the direction of East Aurora. And indeed, it's a delay a game call against the Tomcats. They'll back it up and start over again. In high school football, that's always a tough one, Paul, because you don't have the running clock on the field that the quarterback can look at like you do in the professional and college level. Exactly right. Now looking at East Aurora statistics, Deion Sam's probably their best runner right now from the running back position. Also Tobin Ruff at 18 yards on two carries. That was unofficial, though. But Blattner's not doing anything from a passing situation. And running, he lost 10 on that sweep where Tredup got him in the mm -hmm. first half. So it's pretty much Larkin's ball game right now. Five-man defensive front, and Blattner with a deep, deep drop, looking to pass, and he is drilled and driven down. Number 59, Jeremy Hafling coming to get him. And Blattner takes such an unconventional drop. This kid drops back about 10 yards every time he looks to throw the ball. Third down and huge yardage. That's more than 16 yards, I'll tell you that much. That's going to leave it 26. Good, you got it, about 26 <laughs> yards. They had 16 on the scoreboard. Third down and 26, East Aurora in a hole early. Thus far, Blantner, two rushes, minus 20 yards. <laughs> <laughs> Not too good an average. No. <laughs> and they go with a sweep, rough, looking for some room, dangles the ball out. Oh. He finds a little bit of daylight, squirts up the sideline, a big run, but he's going to be short of the first down. Finally, hog tied on the near side by number 23, Arturo Salinas, but yeah, he'll be about five yards short of that first down. Oh, less than that, he'll be about three yards short of the first down. Boy, Ruff gained about 23 yards back on that. And East Aurora couldn't make up their mind what they wanted to do, and there you see the punting unit trot onto the field. Coach Jeffries was thinking about it. Well, that shows you how much confidence Coach Jeffries has in the offensive unit. Tobin Ruff has been the scoring drive for East Aurora all year. He's got two touchdowns on the year, one against Wabonzi Valley, a 19-yard run, for a touchdown and one against Streamwood. That was only a three yard touchdown run. He's been predominantly the scorer for East Aurora. And the punt is up. Johnson will field it about his 11 yard line. He's running lateral, looking to cut up field. Finds a little bit of room and he runs out of real estate and is knocked down about the 25 yard line on a pretty decent kick from Agama. Well, number 30, Jamie Lara a senior defensive back for East Aurora in on the stop on the far side, but results in a punt, so thus far, East Aurora not mounting any type of offense in this ball game, and again, excellent field position for Larkin as they have their first drive in the second half. There you had a look a moment ago at Chris Ryerson, a defensive back. Those guys haven't seen a lot of action tonight. And McDaniel back to head up the offense, and White is in there. Deep in the eye formation. White gets the carry, tries to slide over right guard, and he's brought down pretty quickly there. That's going to leave a second down and about nine. Pooh White looking to pick up where he left off in that first quarter. The first time he touched the ball in that opening drive, it seemed like magic. Looking to recapture a little of that. Now Pooh's coming out of the game. Johnson will check back in. Yeah, that opening touchdown drive, he had 12 carries, 74 yards unofficially, so. He's got now 86 yards on the night. 
Second down and nine from the 27. Polaris goes in motion. And there's a flag as the pitch goes to Johnson looking for some room. He's driven down about the 30. That's gonna probably be a face mask right in front of the official. We'll see how they sort this one out. Gain of about three. If it's a face mask, the face mask penalty should take precedence because it carries within an automatic first down, but probably we'll see if they're gonna rule it as offsetting penalties here. The officials try to sort it out. I believe that was illegal motion or offside and the face mask. They wipe each other out. The two pen penalties, it is indicated, will nullify one another. And they'll either, will they replay the down in that circumstance? I believe so, yeah. They will. Second down and nine is the call. And we'll try this all over again. Pooh White comes back into the ball game. Let's hope that hand isn't bothering him too much. We'll get a sure indicator probably early here in the third quarter. A lot of shifting going around by East Aurora. McDaniel strong arms it. He has his man. And a nice pick up there by Salinas. Got well, about five yards. Well, I tell you, they can do that all night because the defensive backs on both sides checked off on the wide receivers that time. McDaniel went to Salinas on the far side and was able to get, as you said, five yards on that one. First time that McDaniel went to one of his traditional wide receivers, second pass completion for him. And he showed a little arm strength there. He took really a one and a half step drop and just without putting his body into it, rifled it out there. Brian Melvin checks into the ball game. For the Royals, the extra tight end set is what they go with. Sure enough, Pooh White looking for room on the left side. He picks up the first down and about seven more beyond that. Another healthy run for Pooh White. And it looks like a close, that's almost close to a 10 yard gain. That ball was on the 34 yard line. Let's see where they're gonna mark it at the, about the 42. So that's about a gain of nine. Gain of nine yards and a first down for White. And they move the sticks. Ball lies 43 yard line. Larkin holding a six-zip lead in this homecoming battle, a battle between two teams that are both one and three, both getting their first victory last week and both trying to turn around a season that has begun under difficult circumstances. And fake handoff, McDaniel throws wide open. He had his tight end who couldn't bring it in. Panda Yangi hit him right in the numbers. Yeah, Penny Yankee, though, had to do a 360 in the midair because it was thrown just slightly behind him. It did hit him in the numbers, though, but he couldn't bring it in. But you're right, wide open over the middle. Wow. Second down and 10 will be the call. Pooh White once again coming out of the ball game. Wendell, where are your linebackers, Wendell? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, that was an official's timeout here, the back judge. There you get a look at that defensive line. They've struggled all evening long. They've had trouble stopping the run. And in the past couple of plays, with that quick drop, they have not been able to get to McDaniels. They're not doing too well in the season either, John. <laughs> <laughs> A long year early. Yeah. <laughs> Second down and 10. Johnson gets the call. Caught from behind. Grabbed right by the jersey and literally thrown to the turf. Rick Jennings in on that tackle, number 45. Still going to give him three. That's where they'll mark it after his forward progress. That's going to leave a third down, though, and a pretty hefty chunk. And Pooh White comes back into the ball game, gives the play to McDaniel. And they'll set up for a third down and seven. Michael Stolte, wide receiver. Split near side. Back to pass, he looks Stolte's direction. That's oh. where he goes, and Stolte can't reel it in. Would have been short of the first down. Well, in fairness to Stolte, that landed on his, uh, on his shoulder pad. McDaniel having some open receivers and having a little bit of trouble connecting with him. And that was not a tight spiral, that one. That one wobbled a little bit, so I don't know. Be a fourth down. And Larkin will, will punt the ball away. East Aurora lines up about their 25-yard line. High snap. 
Who White gets off a pretty decent kick. And McGanna fields it at his 30. Oh, oh and he's smacked. Not a whole lot of running room on that play. Well, leading the charge there, number 55. Trying to catch a name here, 55. John Newcomb, a linebacker, 220. Six foot 220 and a senior. My goodness. Larkin really has had the better of this ball game. But when you look at the scoreboard, it's only six zip. East Aurora only a play away from getting back into this thing in a hurry. Two receivers line up either side. Blattner looks over the defense, set to take the snap. And a quick pass, oh. and that ball incomplete. Almost picked off out there by Johnson. Boy, Aaron Blattner, just a quick drop over to the right side. He wasn't anywhere near his wide receiver. That almost went right into the breadbasket of the defender there. Really a miserable pass. Blattner trying to get on track, get his offense running. But he has struggled. Really the only offense to this point of any consequence that East Aurora has been able to run has been given to them by Larkin in the form of penalties. Larkin goes with four down linemen. Oh, and some movement, and that'll draw a flag. That's probably going to be a false start against the Tomcats. See, Blattner takes so much time trying to call the cadence there, and even as he breaks away from center, he, he delays it a little bit. Chris Blake, number 71, jumping on that play, and indeed they will march it back. A lot of mistakes by this young East Aurora squad. And their young coach, Jeffries, has to be getting older as each minute passes <laughs> on that far sideline. Oh, when Coach Jeffries appeared at the Upstate 8 banquet, I think he knew what the type of year it was. He was just hoping that his kids could get a lot of experience throughout this season. Just happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> just happy to be here. Sam's And a big hit. Delivered by that linebacking core. Number 55, John Newcomb out there. Just brought Sam's down for after a gain of five. Sam's looked like he had a little bit of room, and all of a sudden, whack! He was stacked up and driven into the ground. Newcomb doing well on this defensive set for Larkin. Back to the, about the original line of scrimmage. We'll bring up a third down and ten as we go under five minutes left here. And Larkin drops off into a, what looks like a soft zone and a quick pass. And that pass is badly overthrown, intended for Alex Donaldson, who has two touchdowns receiving on the year, but no chance on that pass. And Blattner really struggling as East Aurora's offense comes off the field. And that one was a quick drop over to the side, and he just really overthrew Donaldson. Given the reaction of the East Aurora coaches just to the right of us, I don't even think Blattner was <laughs> supposed to do that. <laughs> and McGanna will kick away. And Johnson will field. Shakes a tackler looking for room on the right side. Turns the corner and he's driven out past midfield about the 46-yard line. And that's where Larkin will resume. Nice tackle by Tobin Ruff on this near side, number nine. Could have been a point-saving tackle right in front of us here, about the 47-yard line. McDaniel trots back onto the field, and Larkin looking for some answers on offense. They scored on that opening drive and really have not been able to put together any type of sustained threat since then. The first time tonight, Larkin opens up a drive on East Aurora's territory. Best field position of the night for the Royals. And Johnson in the backfield in for White. And a quick drop. And he throws that ball short. McDaniel can't connect on the near side with Michael Stolte. That pass incomplete. Neither one of these quarterbacks really have been able to get on track tonight. Found it. Here comes Q White coming back in. I'd say keep the ball on the ground, fellas. 
who a running back that goes over 200 pounds, powerful, also possesses good balance, runs well laterally. We'll see if he continues to get the bulk of the carries. Boy, Polera is the fullback in the, on every play, and I think he's carried the ball once tonight. Oh, who White sheds a tackler, looks for some running room, and he picks up about four yards after it looked like he was going to be stopped cold in the backfield by Anthony McDonald. Even Reggie Bliss, number 88, Able to shed a tackle. Got a bear hug on White. White just shrugged that off. And the play brought into the ball game by Brian Melvin, the running back. And they set Panda Yangi down for this play. They'll go with an eye formation as we go under three and a half minutes left here in the third quarter. Third and six, inside handoff. Polaris has some running room. He sprints down five in the end zone. Touchdown. Polaris, the fullback, on a nice draw play. Scores for Larkin. They go on top. 13, make it 12 zip. Well, Perella's a 42 yard run with 320 left to go. That was a quick handoff to Perella's. Perella's the first man through. Everybody keying on white on that second man through. And Perella's quickly into the backfield. All the way through, 42 yards for a touchdown. No flags down, so the touchdown stands. Two carries, 43 yards on the night for Joe Perellas. And I had just got done saying that Perellas doesn't carry the ball a whole lot, but he sure made that, <laughs> that one count. And they go for the two, and White gets in for the two-point conversion. You can tack that on to the 12. Larkin up 14 zip on homecoming. I think we can do uh, a dandy don a little bit and say uh, turn out the lights. I think this party's over. That that uh, two point conversion really helps because the worst that can happen is a tie here as you're on the touchdown. And we're going to take a quick break and be back for the kickoff after this intermission. I got my tuition paid thanks to EAL. EAL made it happen for me. Educational Assistance Limited has helped over a thousand kids like these get a college education. I'm Peter Roscom. EAL takes your donation of excess business inventory and swaps it for scholarships of like value. EAL, it's a great way for business to lend a hand. Call 708-690-0010. In the Army National Guard Infantry, you run, jump, shoot, climb, sweat, and strain the limits of your physical and mental ability. But you learn to seize control of any situation. And that's something that'll make the rest of your life a whole lot easier. An irresistible feeling from the irresistible force. Army National Guard. And there's a look at Pooh White getting set to kick it off. Usually when Pooh kicks it off, it's after he's just scored a touchdown, but not this time. Senior Joseph Perales running in from 42 yards out. Boy, and White gets this one pretty good. Rough fields at about his nine-yard line. Heads up the middle. Breaks around to the right side. He uh -oh. could go all the way. Look out. Rough. Nobody's going to catch him. And he's in the end zone. Runs back the kickoff. 91 yard touchdown for Tobin Ruff. And East Aurora is back in this ball game here at Memorial Field. A quick strike. Well, I'll tell you, it really quiets the crowd. Everybody's looking for a flag. There is no flag on the play. Ruff gets it at about his nine yard line, as you said. Went up the middle, got the wedge, went over to the right side. Nobody really laid a hand on him. And before you knew it, the only guy he had to beat was the kicker. And White was not able to catch him as Ruff just runs up the sideline, 91 yards for a kickoff return for Ruff. And thank goodness Larkin had the two-point conversion because now it's a 14-6 game with the extra point. It could be a 14-7 game. And you're still only facing a tie and not down by one. And East Aurora will go for the one. Magana trying to punch it through. High snap. He gets the kick away, and it's good. And just like that, we got a ball game, and East Aurora's on the board. 
14-7 here at Memorial Field. And now East Aurora will kick the ball off. Boy, and there you saw a little bit of the speed that makes Tobin Ruff such a good halfback. Well, <laughs> Tobin Ruff, 91 yards just on that one run right there. My goodness. On a kickoff return. And it's getting interesting here. There you see the crowd. They're kind of quiet for the moment, almost shell-shocked. <laughs> That's something that you have to watch out for. Tobin Ruff, as we said, coming in here, uh, he has been the East Aurora offense thus far this year. He's the big play guy, and he just got his big play, 91 yards, and as you said, brought them right back into this ball game. Now, if East Aurora can tighten up on defense, they might be able to pull off a tie here with... Uh, a good 15 minutes left to go in regulation time. 12 in the fourth quarter plus three in this quarter. And Larkin had squibbed the two previous kickoffs and they kicked that one away and Ruff made him pay for it. You gotta wonder if they'll make that mistake again. <laughs> and Magana set to kick it off. He does and Johnson fields at his nine yard line looking for some room. He squirts up the middle where he's brought down at about the 37 yard line. That's where Larkin will begin. Three minutes exactly left here in the third quarter of an interesting upstate eight battle. I'm John Mercure along with Paul Lepic. Thank you for joining us on Jones Intercable Sports to bring you this game. A quick programming note, we'll also be bringing you in a few weeks that Elgin Larkin battle, always an interesting football game, a lot of emotion, a lot of tra tradition, promises to be a good one. You can hope you can throw the records out on that ball game. That's, that's for blood and guts. And Poo White back into the ball game. McDaniel looking to throw the ball, and he does. Ah. And the quick throw and the quick catch out to number 23. That's Salinas. And of course, in high school football, when the knee hits the ground, you're done, it's finished. Yep. Gain of about five. I have unofficially Damon McDaniel three, uh, three passes on 10 attempts for 22 yards. Most of the Larkin offense on the ground tonight. And that'll bring us to a second down. East Aurora at a critical phase on defense, trying to stop the Royals. Another passing play. Oh, and a very nice attempt out there in the flat. There's one thing I don't understand about this play calling right now. We have right now 99 yards unofficially for Quilshin White, number 12. And uh, there you haven't gone to him. And I would say you got to go with your bread and butter here. East yeah. Aurora. You don't want to get this defense fired up and <laughs> ultimately have East Aurora come back in the ballgame. The only thing I can really think is that maybe his hand is bothering him, but they do it keep him on the football field. Third down and four from the 44. And another inside handoff. No. This one's not fooling anybody. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. That's going to bring up a fourth down and about four, maybe three and a half. I'll tell you, you look at that defensive unit coming off the field for East Aurora, and they're pretty happy with themselves coming off. It's been three and out, and it has really quieted the crowd here at Memorial Field. And the momentum may be swinging. And the man who's helped change things around is back to field this punt. Ruff stands at about his 25-yard line. We'll see if Pooh White kicks him the football. He does. He puts it in the air. Ruff will let it bounce. And he won't have anything to do with that. A swarm of Royals down the ball at about the 26-yard line of East Aurora. And that's where they'll resume with 106 left in this ball game. Well, before that, the East Aurora Tomcats, their first drive was a fumble, a missed field goal, two punts. And then you had this 91-yard kickoff return. So it will be interesting to see now with... The ball in a conventional field position at their own 26, what East Aurora can mount here as far as offense. And Blattner set to take the snap as we go under a minute. Left in the third quarter, said the ball game inadvertently a moment ago. 
Oh, boy, and there's a guy who obviously did not know the snap count. Alex Donaldson, number 42. <laughs> Out of the blocks a little early, we'll say. Just a teens. <laughs> he was lined up in the slot on the near side, and he started to sprint down the field. I think Alex caught the hint when he overran the defensive back. The defensive back was still standing still. I think he caught the hint <laughs> that something was wrong there. <laughs> And they'll move it. I, I don't know if you misheard the quarterback or if you missed the snap count, but obviously some miscommunication oh on my. that play. They'll back it up five yards and try it again. That'll bring up a first and 15. That'll drive the coach crazy because you don't even know if he was involved in the play. That's right. They look to be set up for a running play. And it's Keenan looking for some room. He gets out. Wide to the right, one man to beat, and he's driven out of bounds. Boy, East Aurora beginning to move the ball quite impressively, and that will move the chains. Keenan with a gain of about, let's see where they mark it. Looks like about 19 yards, almost 20. I'll give him 20 yards on that on that carry. Oh, well, it's, it's the same thing. They cut back up the middle and then cut back to the outside, and... Well, now they now they respot the ball and they're <laughs> it's a gain of 19, but that'll be the end of the third quarter. That brings us to the end of three. In an interesting ball game, Larkin holding a 14-7 lead over the guest Tomcats of East Aurora. We'll be back with fourth quarter action after this short break on Jones Intercable. This is William Shatner. Imagine the training and skill it takes for a dog to serve as a blind person's eyes. Guide dogs give blind people the freedom to go wherever they want. And the law permits them everywhere that's open to the public. A blind person and a guide dog are a working team for personal independence. To learn more, call the Guide Dog Foundation for the Blind toll-free 1-800-548-4337. That's 1-800-548-4337. Recycling all our Sunday papers would save over half a million trees a week. Recycle. It's the everyday way to save the world. And we're back. Fourth quarter action. The Tomcats resume first and ten from the 44-yard line. Ruff and Sam's in the backfield. I'm sorry. Keen. Keenan gets the carry. Man, that's another first down. It looks like, depending on the spot, they may move the chains again. Looks like they may mark him just short of the first down. Oh, wow. He's going to get a real bad spot on this ball. Mm -hmm. Isn't he? Wow. And they'll bring the chains in. <laughs> if they would have spotted it where it should have been spotted, they wouldn't even be bringing the chains in. His knee touched on the other side of that 45-yard line, I'll tell you. They, they mark it a good yard shy of that. <laughs> Pretty interesting. Mm-mm-mm. And it looks from here like uh, it's a lot closer than it really should have been. I know. East Aurora trying to get it into the end zone and then kick the PAT that would Got it. tie it up. And he does have it. There is justice in the world. <laughs> there they'll clean the ball off a little bit. Don't want it to get slippery and anybody to get hurt. I want officially I have Keenan five carries, 35 yards. Keenan with some pretty effective running, and now Ruff checks back into the ball game. Ariel Martinez lined up in the wide receiver spot near side. And Ruff will get the carry, looking to turn the corner, and he's hit early by McKaylin and then finished off by Stolte. Nice play by number 75, Ed McQuellen, in the sense that uh, he stopped Ruff before Ruff had a chance of getting around the outside, and the pursuit caught up to make the play, so no gain for Ruff on that one. That'll leave a second and 10 for East Aurora. And the Larkin defense looking to dig in here. They go with five defensive linemen. Blattner with a split backfield. And rough on a reverse, and the ball's on the turf. And it looks like East Aurora may have recovered the ball on a play that Ruff never fully had under control. 
boy, McQuellen was right in there, number 75 again. Nobody blocked him on this, on this left side. And he was able to get in there and try to penetrate. And Keenan fell on the ball and saved it for East Aurora. Loss of five on that play. Backs it up into East Aurora territory now at the 48. And the Tomcats moving the wrong direction as the clock continues to move also. A long third down as Keenan and Ruff line up in the backfield. I don't think the wide receivers are lined up properly either. He had both guys going to the other side. And Ruff gets the carry. He accelerates, looking for some outside room. And he gets back past the original line of scrimmage, but he's going to be about nine yards short of the first down. James Johnson, number 11, in on the stop on the far side. That brings up a fourth down, and thus far, East Aurora keeps their offense on the field, getting into that time of the ball game where you got to think about going for it, and indeed, Blattner receives the play from McGanna. Fourth and nine. Martinez checks out of the ball game. We'll see what Jeffries has in mind for this young East Aurora squad. A critical juncture of the ball game. Also critical for Larkin because Larkin lost the momentum a little bit, especially after that 91-yard kickoff return. Let's see if the defense can hold him here. Fourth down and nine from the 44. Fakes it to Ruff. Blattner looking to throw. Throws downfield into double coverage. Good coverage. Not a very wise pass. Not much chance uh, that double, that was going to get caught. Yeah, double coverage out there. And Donaldson looking over to the side here to the line judge to see if there was going to be an interference call. No interference. That ball was widely overthrown. And someone is down on the play. That may be Johnson yeah, being 29. attended to. Yeah, 29, Myron Johnson. Looks like maybe he just got the wind knocked out of him. We'll see. In any case, Larkin will take over on downs. Well, whatever it is, Myron Johnson still has a sense of humor. Both trainers laughing at something Johnson said as they help him up. And Johnson makes it off the field under his own power. In fact, he even trots off. Some guys will do anything for a little rest. I tell you, I tell you, just need a little bit of, maybe, maybe he wanted a little bit of camera time. That could be it. <laughs> well, we were more than happy to accommodate. <laughs> what the heck? That's the name on the camera. Larkin set to begin at their own 44-yard line. Under nine minutes left. We'll see if they try to chew up a large chunk of the clock here. Maybe they'll start to go back to Pooh White a little bit. Stolte in motion. And indeed, White gets the carry. Boy, is he buried. He lost about three yards on that play. A big hit by Jennings. Now we get him down to 96 yards. <laughs> Unofficially a move in the wrong direction. Yeah. And Melvin runs the play into the ball game, and as they've done all game, Panda Yangi comes out. Second down and 13. It's what we're looking at. You guys hear him now? Yeah. Okay. Thing is, can he hear us? Yeah. Second down and 13. Stand by him to take it to him. Then you can hear what they're talking about. And McDaniel looking to pass. He's got his man and can't hold on to the ball. Stolte. Stay on 42. Stay on 42. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. Okay. 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 Third down and 12. That pass intended for Stolte on the far side. Okay. Maybe this is a good way to do it. There comes Johnson. Third down and 12. A little more than eight minutes left here in the third quarter. Again, right? And Johnson's back into the ball game for the Royals. McDaniel looking to convert on third and long. East Aurora trying to dig in here for the big defensive stop. A big pass rush gets the ball away to Johnson. He can't hang on. Uh, Johnson almost had that one on this near side. In fact, there was no coverage on him at all. Absolutely none. McDaniel under a lot of pressure Johnson on that play. Good. Johnson's still talking to himself as he's going back into the huddle. And Larkin 
will be forced to kick the ball away, refusing to shut the door on East Aurora. Fourth and 12, Who White back to kick the ball away. And McGanna back to receive the punt. I don't understand why Ruff's not back there. But McGanna fields a good punt at his 25 yard line, looking for some room, running laterally. And he cuts up field on the far sideline, driven out of bounds by Pooh White with help from his teammates. Well, I tell you, that defender, Pooh White, out there, we have, a, we have an injured player down there. And as we check on that, we're going to take a short break and be back with more action in just a moment. Don't go away. These are things that are good for you, things that people do every day. They become habits, because if they didn't, these things just wouldn't get done. Even something as good for you as saving. Fortunately, there's an easy way to save. Buy U.S. savings bonds through the payroll savings plan at work. Every payday, you save. And the sooner you start, the more you'll save. So make it a habit. Buy U.S. savings bonds. And we believe that's Michael Stolte being helped up over there, a guy who's been in on a lot of plays all afternoon, and he is walking it off to the applause of the crowd. He looks to be okay on the surface. And yeah, when Ruff made that cut over on that far side, all the defenders had to double back, and Stolte might have really got the wind knocked out of him as he's trying to pursue that play. Well, Stolte comes off under his own power. East Aurora once again with excellent field position. I can tell the crowd hasn't left. They're still very much here. First and 10 from the 42 yard line. And it's Keenan looking for some running room, a few hard yards inside. He looked like he picked up about three. Not a whole lot doing on that play. Keenan has found some success inside early on in this ball game. Especially when they, when they get inside and then cut back they're doing a little stunning on the offensive line inside on the, on the Larkin defenders and the running backs are able to cut back on on the outside, either on the left or the right sides. Second down and seven at the 46 yard line. Ta clock continuing to tick away. Larkin with a big front. They have about six guys on that defensive line. Keenan looking to get outside, cuts it back and he's knocked down pretty early on that play. Robert Michalik made the first contact for the Larkin Royals. That'll leave a third and about five. Larkin beginning to shut down the Tomcat running game. That time Keenan went on a sweep on the left side and didn't find that much more running room on that left side. Martinez checks out of the ball game for the Tomcats. Tomcats looking at a third down and five as Jamie Lara comes near side in the wide receiver slot. And Blattner fakes the handoff, and this is a bootleg, and he's got a lot of room. One man to beat, nice and a play. great tackle. What a big open field tackle by Johnson. Lawrence well, Johnson wasn't going to buy the fake by Reggie Bliss, number 88, just stayed at home. Made that great open field tackle on Blattner. That was huge. He was the only guy between Blattner and the end zone. Comes up with the big stick. That's going to leave him with fourth and a little less than a yard. All that running, he only gained four yards. <laughs> He's one of those guys, kind of reminds me of Brad Muster. That is Blattner. He's running, running, running. Looks like he's moving in slow motion. Yep. Fourth and one. Got to go for it. The Tomcats forced to go for it. And they go with two big backs, Keenan and Sams in the ballgame. Keenan gets the carry. And he scurries through. And with a good spot, he'll have the first down. Didn't get much more than he needed. Oh, my God, this is very close. They're going to have to measure. Once again, the spot looks to be not too generous. Now, I think, though, that it's not too generous, but I think it's an accurate spot because he, the knee hit the ground and he crawled a little bit before they were able to down that ball. That's where the knee hits. It counts. And this will be very close. This could be the ball game for East Aurora. 
And they out. have it by about six inches. Mm -mm -mm. Enough to move the chains and not much more. I figure you got to go with what got you here thus far this year if you're East Aurora, and that's number nine, Tobin Ruff. I'm anticipating he's going to get the ball a few times, although I don't see him in the lineup. Interesting. Once again, it's Sams and Keenan in a split backfield. Flatner set to check off the offense. 5-12 left. He's thrown up top on a timing pattern. And he's got his man. Driven out of bounds about the 10-yard line. And a nice pass reeled in by Alex Donaldson on that play. East Aurora threatening. That gets all the way down to the 22-yard line. Salinas and Johnson in on the stop out there. We have a timeout on the field. Two injured players around midfield. There you see them. Both of them look to be in a lot of pain. Uh, one's from Larkin, one's from East Aurora. Excellent timing pattern, though. Bla uh, Blattner just a couple of steps back, just tossed it up there. And the wide receiver on that far side, Donaldson was able to get underneath it, bring it in. Takes the ball down to the 22-yard line as we close in on five minutes. Left here in the ballgame, Larkin clinging to a 14-7 lead at this juncture. We're trying to get the names and numbers of those players for you. Gives both teams a breather, chance to catch their breath as we head into the home stretch of what's really turned out to be a pretty competitive football game this second half. Gosh, we don't have a reverse angle camera. <laughs> oh, here we go. No one guy moves on the side, but we still don't have a number. Of course, East Aurora would not put their numbers by their shoulder pads. We should just take camera number 32 from the far stands over there. There you go. Boy, neither player has yet gotten up. Nope. We hope it's nothing serious. Well, we got this break. We can tell you that tomorrow night, St. Charles takes on Elgin here in a big upstate eight battle. A lot of people figuring right now, three teams out of this, and here we have number 69, Jeremy Heffling for Larkin walking off under his own power. And the other guy number is... Number 56, it looks like. Jermaine Turnage. And it's 69, yep. Joseph Yokana. And they look to be okay. They must have smacked into each other pretty good. A lot of people figuring out of the upstate eight, three teams are going to make the playoffs. So Bonzi Valley and St. Charles, two of those teams. Then Elgin, if not by record, certainly on points accumulated throughout the season based on wins of the other opponents in your conference. So big game tomorrow, St. Charles against Elgin. Here's East Aurora on their own 20 on the Larkin 22 yard line. And Ruff is back in the backfield. First and 10. And it's Ruff that gets the call around the right side. Oh, oh nice play. And Johnson once again with the big hit at about the 20 yard line. Again, another open field tackle by Myron Johnson, number 29. My goodness. Boy, Johnson comes to play on defense. Ruff only gained a yard on that one. That'll bring up second and nine. Larkin trying to dig in here for the big stop. And now Ruff comes running off the field at the last minute. And the Tomcats go with Keenan in the backfield. And it looks like Brian Richardson. And they stack that offensive line. One man in the slot, and that's it. And it's Keenan with the carry. Looking for some running room and eaten up. Knocked down, not much doing there. Chris they, John Utley, one of the guys in on the stop. They quickly want to get up because they don't want to call a timeout. The clock continues to run with about four minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. And more, imp time. more important than the clock right now is that they're looking at a third and eight. Well, at the 20, 14 to seven, Larkin out in front. Donaldson back in the game, Martinez back in the game. And in the backfield, 
It's Sams and Keenan. Third and nine from the 20 yard line. Martinez on the near side. Big third down play. And Blattner takes the snap, looks to the air, and some miscommunication. That ball falls incomplete. Martinez nowhere near that ball. Uh, in fact, I think Martinez was going to cut inside, and that pass just sailed out of bounds. A Maybe critical it. mistake leaves a fourth and nine. This could be the last breath of air for the East Aurora Tomcats if they don't convert here. Fourth and nine from the 20-yard line. The Royals' defense regroups. It's the ball game right here. Last time that East Aurora was in this position, they did not convert on a fourth down. Let's see what they do here. And they bring Ruff back into the ball game. Keenan is in the slot. Donaldson on the near side. And now Martinez goes in motion. Uh, they fake the pitch, throw over the middle, and it's picked off by the Royals. And a brilliant catch. By Salinas, number 23. Salinas back in that secondary, picked the ball off. As East Aurora looked for the little slant route, were unable to connect. Reggie Bliss, it looked like the intended target. Yep. So I would think if you're the Larkin Royals here with 312 left to go in regulation that you're going to keep the ball on the ground. East Aurora will undoubtedly be forced to burn their timeouts in an effort to try to get the ball back with something on the clock. We're under three minutes. First and ten Royals from their own 16-yard line. And Pooh White gets the call but doesn't get much yardage. He may have picked up a yard. It's going to be about, well, it looks about a yard, second down and nine. And the clock continues to tick. A couple plays here, one first down probably, and the game could, for all intentional purposes, be over. A couple wide receivers split down at the bottom of your screen. Once again, they go with White, Perales in the backfield. And McDaniel on a keeper, looking for room on the right side. And he picks up some pretty decent yardage before being knocked down short of the first down out over the 25-yard line. And a gain of about six or seven yards. It's going to run up a third down, a little bit more than a yard. I'll give him six yards, third down and two left. And there's a timeout on the field. East Aurora has burned one of their timeouts, and so will we. We'll be back to find out if East Aurora can dig in and stop the Royals after this short break. Jones Intercable's customer service representatives, key members of a staff dedicated to the everyday needs of our subscribers. Our office at 1617 Weld Road is open 8 till 6 Monday through Friday and is now open 8 till 5 on Saturday. Customer service phone lines are open 24 hours a day. Call 697 96 9-9. Well, here we are, Paul, a tough ball game between yeah. two teams that haven't had a lot of success on the field and have made some mistakes tonight, but have really shown a lot of heart. Now we're down to about two minutes left. And we want to point out earlier tonight the Larkin Royal sophomore team won their homecoming 22 to nothing over East Aurora. So trying to make it a clean sweep tonight for the Royals. But as you said, John, uh, Larkin's really controlled the game pretty much, uh, the, the tempo of this ball game. East Aurora never really getting anything on track. The 91-yard kickoff return was the only highlight for East Aurora tonight. Here we go, third down and two, 201. The time showed on the clock. Three-man backfield with Pooh White. Pooh White gets the call, and he fights for the first down, and it's going to depend on the spot. East Aurora with a nice surge there. I'm not sure if they were able to stop him or not. He looks to be a little bit short. They're probably going to measure here. Boy, that right side just blew off the ball there, and Pooh White going right behind them. Now there's a timeout, East Aurora again. Larkin with a big decision here. 
fourth and short. Boy, if they go for it and don't make it, East Aurora sure ends up with good field position, and you gotta believe they have to kick the ball away here probably. You would think, because you're deep in your own territory at the 25 yard line. And indeed, McDaniel comes off the field. Fourth and a little less than a yard is the call. 146 left. East Aurora looks like they'll get the ball back. And their threat, Tobin Ruff, <laughs> stands back just his side of midfield. The only thing you got to do is kick it away from Tobin Ruff. I mean, how Absolutely. difficult is that? Just the one kick guy it away that, from him. The one guy that can beat you. This guy's the one guy that's broken one for their only score of the ball game. And now a little psychology perhaps going on. Larkin calls the timeout and Coach Krieger trots out to the field, wants to make sure there are no critical mistakes on this play. If you're the coach of East Aurora, do you set up for the return effort or do you go for the block? Well, I would think uh, given your inability to get the get off the ball the way they have tonight, I think you're going to try to set up for a return, if anything. Because they haven't had any success getting off the ball at the line of scrimmage. Defensive line has pretty much been laid back tonight. And especially so. if you couple that with the uh, with the fact that Ruff is really their only legitimate threat at right. breaking off a big play, yeah. doing something quick and easy. So I would think you want to set up for a return. Hopefully you're going to get the same type of a return that you got in that 91-yard kickoff return. Oh, and now McDaniel comes huh. back onto the field. Okay. A little bit of jockeying around here. Ruff gets off the field. Let's see now what happens. Now let's see if Coach Krieger can get off the field before the play starts. He comes trotting off. <laughs> Here we go, fourth and one. This could be the ball game. Three-man backfield once again. Perales, calls. Melvin, White. Fourth and one. White gets the call and he's through for the easy first down out across the 30-yard line. And I think White goes over the 100-yard mark. I have him unofficially at about 102 yards. Who White with the first down. 102 yards and about 24 carries. From the 30-yard line, it'll be first down and 10. Under a minute 30 left, Larkin holds on to a 14-7 advantage. And McDaniel set to take another snap. Petchow now into the ball game. No mistakes is the call here. Just hang on to the ball, keep the ball on the ground, let East Aurora, let the time run out. And that's what Two White does on that play. Nothing fancy, but no mistakes. And East Aurora just about out of options. Clock continues to run here. Second down and 10, ball from the 30 yard line and barring some disaster Larkin will move to two and three on the year. East Aurora will drop to one and four. Well, you can technically kneel down on this one. Uh, two. And now we have some confusion. It looks like <sighs> too much time. Delay of game stops the clock. <laughs> stops the clock with 33 seconds left. Krieger not too happy about that call. Uh -huh. That's called running down the clock as far as you can before you snap it. And there's no, there's no difficulty in your play calling here. The, <laughs> keep the ball on the ground, go up to the line of scrimmage, go hut, hut, and get the handoff, and that's it. I, it's not that difficult, guys. And the stands begin to clear out a little bit. Give the ball to White. He just plunges up the middle for a couple. But more importantly, the clock continues to tick. And East Aurora looks like they may have burned their last time out. Is that the call? Yep. Yes, it is. <laughs> With 25 seconds left, East Aurora calls one more timeout. It's going to be a third down and about 11 yards to go. Pretty good ball game here tonight, Paul. It's been, been sloppy at times, but... Mm -hmm. Not too bad. It's also had its exciting moments and looks like Larkin's going to get a W on homecoming. And that's a one-man offensive wrecking crew here for Larkin. Boo White, 26 carries unofficially for 106 yards on the night. 
He had that three yard touchdown run in the first quarter and luckily Larkin has been able to hold on. Then he had Perales with the 42 yard touchdown run. That was at 3.20 left to go in the third quarter. And White with that excellent two point conversion which made it 14 to seven which is forcing now East Aurora to try to score a touchdown. They weren't able to do it tonight outside of that 91 yard kickoff return by Ruff. So Ruff the highlight man for East Aurora and White and Perales, the highlight men for Larkin. And that tells the story. A look at the scoreboard. Not much time left. Larkin up by seven points. Pooh White back in a safety position. There's Neil, thank you. And that'll <laughs> be the last snap of the ball game. That's gonna just about do it, folks. They'll count it down. Not much time left, not much suspense left. This ball game's gonna end with the Larkin Royals winning their homecoming game. 14-7, the final score, and a happy crowd celebrate. <laughs> Our final score, 14-7, there you see the players exchanging greetings. Paul, why don't you recap that scoring real quick? Okay, looking at the scoring here, Quilson White, a three yard run at the 443 mark, first quarter made the score six nothing. Then you had, at the half, Larkin continued with that six nothing lead. The 320 left to go, third quarter. Perales with a 42 yard touchdown run made it 12 nothing. White with a two point conversion made it 14 nothing. And Paul Krieger's gotta be, Coach Krieger has to be fairly happy. A pretty young team. They lost a lot of starters last year and this will move their record to two and three on the year. Absolutely, and after tough losses earlier this year against St. Charles and Wabansi Valley, this comes as a welcome relief. Uh, 14 to seven, the final score, as you said. Two highlight people, Tobin Ruff for East Aurora. Seven carries, he had 140 yards on the night, 91 of which was on that kickoff return. So seven carries for 49 yards for Tobin Ruff as a running back. But Coulson White had 26 carries, 106 yards on the night for the Larkin Royals. So he's gotta be my star of the game if we were to have that. But uh, again, the final 14 to seven and Larkin goes on with a two and three record. And that's gonna bring us to the end of our broadcast. There you see the cars begin to leave, the fans begin to clear out. As they say goodbye to Memorial Field for another evening of high school football, so do we. We thank you for joining us here on Jones Intercable Sports for this upstate eight battle between the Larkin Royals and the East Aurora Tomcats. And the next time we'll be on, it'll be that traditional Elgin Larkin game. You got it, Paul. That Elgin Larkin game taking place on October 30th promises to be a dandy, and we'll bring it here to you. Thank you for joining us. That brings us to the end of our broadcast for this evening. <laughs>